When I first tried out Linux, I basically took the, uh, the hardcore approach. I dived in head first, I wiped my Windows install, I installed Arch, and I stumbled around for a couple of months until I got to the point where I felt comfortable, and now I am here two or so years later. But most people aren't like me and would much rather just ease themselves into it until they feel comfortable actually properly trying it out. So there's three main approaches people usually take and they fit into two main categories. So for the non-destructive approaches, we have live booting and we have a virtual machine. And then for the destructive approach, we have dual booting. The reason I say that dual booting is destructive is because it has to go and wipe a drive or wipe a petition to actually go and install something. There are ways to get around that, but if you're first installing Linux, you probably don't know how. Now you probably have your personal favorite way of trying out new distros, and maybe that is the same, or maybe it's different from the way that you recommend a new Linux user should actually go and try out Linux. But have you ever stopped to consider which approach might actually be the best? I don't think I can answer that question, but I can certainly give you the advantages and disadvantages of each of the approaches. Now this is going to be targeted at someone who is very new to Linux. Maybe they've never even tried a distro before and they just want to find out what the best way to try it is going to be. Let's start with live booting. So live booting is where you take the ISO for Arch Linux, Ubuntu, any distro out there really, you go and put it onto a USB or if you live 15 years ago, a CD, you plug it into your system and then you boot off of that. Now, this is usually the way you go and actually install it onto your hardware, but basically every distro out there is going to allow you to actually use the distro, usually for things like system maintenance, but there's nothing stopping you actually just running it normally. In the case of Arch Linux, the installation and the trying out Arch is sort of the same thing, but distros like Ubuntu separate that out into a try Ubuntu and then install Ubuntu. Either way though, it lets you try out what the distro can actually do. The biggest problem with live booting is they won't be persistent. So if you go and download a program or you go and save a file, that's not actually gonna be saved onto the USB. And when you go and restart the system, all of that stuff is going to be gone. So you can't properly test out what it's going to be like on an extended usage. You can go and try out what's installed by default and see if you sort of like whatever desktop environment or window manager comes with it, or in the case of Arch Linux, I guess, using the TTY, but you can't really get a proper long-term usage from it. You can address that by going and mounting the hard drives and installing file systems you haven't done so already and then saving on that, but I feel like if you're just trying to try out a distro, that's sort of outside of the scope of what you want to be doing. What it does allow you to do though is test out if your hardware is going to work nicely under Linux. Most things are gonna play fine, but maybe you have like a weird drawing tablet or some like weird $7,000 keyboard with all of these programmable macros that don't actually get detected if you plug it in under Linux. Stuff like that makes live booting really great. You also have to keep in mind that anytime you load anything off the thumb drive, it may take a while to load because thumb drives aren't known for having the greatest read speeds. So this is great for examining a distro if you want to examine the vanilla experience. Apart from that though, if you're trying to go for like a long-term testing, this is not the way you want to go. Something much better for that is using a virtual machine. Now, when I say VM, I mean a normal VM. I don't mean like a Mudaha level VM where you have GPU pass through with your 3090. It's being recognized as a real PC. So if you play a game that has like VM detection in it, it's not actually going to detect that. I mean, you fire up, say, VirtualBox or QEMU, or if you're on Mac, something like Parallels, and then you install the distro and you go and test it. Now, this does require some prerequisite VM knowledge, so how to actually use the VM software you're working with, how to pass data to and from the VM, how to pass devices into the VM. So if you want to go and, like, I don't know, test out, say... I know, drawing tablet, how you'd actually get that being detected by the VM, just to make sure you can see what compatibility issues you might have, understanding that the performance you get will not be representative of what it will be like running it on actual hardware, especially if you're using older hardware. So even on like my older laptop, which wasn't 
too bad. If I tried to run something like Arch Linux in a VM, it would be considerably slower than just running it directly on the hardware. And understanding that is very important so you don't go and try out a distro with some desktop environment and think, oh, this is bad because it's slow, when in reality it wouldn't actually be slow if you properly installed it. Even though you do get that performance degradation, unlike live booting, it gives you full access to an operating system with a hard drive attached. So you can go and install anything you want, and then when you come back to it, everything is still going to be installed. For example, right now I've got a Gen 2 VM that I've got for some testing stuff, and I've also got Xorg and DWM installed, and if I want to, I could go and use that. This is my personal favorite way to go and test stuff. It's safe, I can't accidentally wipe my hard drive, it's quick to set up, I can go and very easily back stuff up, and it's very, very quick to destroy when I'm done with it. Lastly, dual booting is a really interesting option. So this gives you full access to your hardware without any of the performance degradation of using a VM. But like using a VM or live booting, you can go and test out any of your peripherals or anything like that, plugging them into Linux and seeing if they'll actually work. And if they don't work, you can go and try to find some drivers for them and go and install them. And then when you go and reboot the system, all of that stuff is still going to be Safe. Even though dual booting is going to give you the best experience testing that distro long term, it does have some pretty serious drawbacks, especially if you are new to Linux. One of those is that the Windows bootloader and the Linux bootloader don't particularly like each other. So if you do this setup process wrong, you can put yourself in a situation where you have the Windows bootloader on boot and it's not seeing Linux, or you have the Linux bootloader on boot, something like Grub or Systemd boot, and it's not seeing Windows. Now, all of the dual booting fans are going to tell me this can be addressed, and it absolutely can be, and if you want to do this properly, it probably should be. But I don't think this is something that someone first testing out Linux really wants to get themselves involved with. The way that I handle dual booting is basically a hack. So every time I want to go and boot into Windows, I will go into my UEFI and just swap around my boot order and let it handle it like that. Now, if you only have a single hard drive, I would never recommend doing a dual boot for your first installation. I know it can be done, but it involves resizing your petitions, making sure that those petitions actually can be made smaller if they can't be, going and clearing out data so they can be made a bit smaller, and then fitting the install in that empty space that you've just made. It can be done, but it can be very fiddly if you don't know what you're doing. If you have a second hard drive, though, you can go and install Linux on that and you will be fine. If you want to be extra sure that you don't select the wrong hard drive, before you get to the installation process, go and unplug the other hard drive and then re-plug it back in when you are done. However, there is a safer way you can do it if you have a single hard drive or you don't want to go and wipe your secondary hard drive. What you can do is go and buy yourself like a 64, 128 or 256 gig thumb drive and then install Linux onto that. Or if you have a like an external hard drive laying around, you could use that as well. And unlike the live CD, this is going to be a full distro installation onto that hard drive. So you can go and, you know, save data on it, anything like that. Now, keep in mind, this isn't going to give you the best read-write performance. In fact, the read-write performance is probably going to be horrible unless you opted for an external hard drive. But it does allow you to go and take that external hard drive or thumb drive any way you want and go and test it on a separate system. All of these approaches have their advantages, but I feel like live booting is way too limiting. If you want to go and test out Linux, you probably want to go and install stuff and actually set up an environment that makes sense for what you want to do. Dual booting is probably the best option when it comes to long-term testing, but I feel like for someone first starting out, the barrier to entry is a little bit too high. I think that VMs are the most logical first option. And then when you want to go and take the next step, then move up to doing a dual boot, maybe even with your main hard drive unplugged so you don't accidentally break anything. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think is the best way for someone to first experience Linux? I 
imagine the comments are going to get fairly heated, but try to keep whatever you say civil. So that's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please check out my Patreon subscribe to Startly Berapay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.